Get it, cause it sounds like y'all ready to get it. Y'all done already fired me up. So tonight we're gonna be talking about, for some it's gonna be move forward and for others it's going to be move on. And so the reason why I'm using those interchangeably because there is, um, I was, I, I'm a reality show person, don't judge me. And the Braxtons had made a return. And you, if, for many of you who knows the Braxton family values or followed that family, you know that one of the siblings died. Uh, Tracy Braxton died about a couple years ago. Well, um, the family has returned, the sisters have returned, and they're doing um, the reality show again. And the first few episodes, um, actually the second and third episode, they're talking about grief. They're going through like a grief therapy. Well. They were, um, the show, again, the show has already started, but I did catch a clip on the Shade Room. Any, do I have anybody that follows the Shade Room? I know I got some people that follow the Shade Room. But anyway, um, she was on the Shade Room, and they were doing an interview with her, and they were asking her about how things were going with her grief. And she said something very, very key that really struck my attention to the point to where I knew I had heard her said it, say it the other day, but I wanted, for the sake of Bible study, I wanted to revisit it to make sure I'm quoting her right. She was talking about moving on and she said that the therapist um, had told her that she doesn't have to move on from the death of her sister. But it's important to move forward. What am I saying? Y'all want me to break it down what I'm saying? What I'm saying is, let me just go here. In her interview, again, on the shade room, um, she was talking about her grieving sister who had died of cancer. She said, I want to make sure I'm quoting things right. She said um, her therapist taught her how to not move on, but to move forward. Meaning moving on means you're finished with it. I mean, it's over. She said she will never be done grieving her sister, but to move forward, meaning she can still continue to live her life in a positive fashion without feeling such a deep sense of grief and walking around with it on her, meaning she's processing, the process of her of grieving her sister means she's not moving on, but as if she's finished with her sister, but she's moving forward in order to live a life without feeling such deep grief. And so we're gonna be talking about moving on and moving forward because there's some situations that we need to move on from. Right, But then there's other situations like the death of a loved one that perhaps we need to just learn how to move forward in. Are y'all with me? Yes. So y'all wondering, well, what does this got to do with Esther? I'm glad you asked. Y'all with me? Okay, anybody yes. else need to yes. be skewed in? Okay, cool. So here in tonight's text, according to chapter 2, we have the king who is now what it says is, it says later when King Exerces, fury had subsided, he remembered Vashti and what she had done and what he had decreed about her. So let me pause here. What we seen last week, right? In chapter one, he was married, right? He, he, had, uh, he was married to Vashti, she was the queen, right? But because of her disobedience because she didn't honor the king's command when he had sent for her. Remember, he sent seven attendants to go get her, to bring her to come before him because he wanted to show her off. And because she refused him, meaning that we talked about that word rebellion last week, right? Because she rebelled against him, there were some consequences that she had to face. And remember, he uh, when she refused him, when she rebelled against him, when she rejected his off his um, command to come before him, she then put herself in a situation where there was going to be a consequence. Mm -hmm. And so he there he knew that there was going to be a consequence. But instead of him just laying one out, because the Bible tells us that he was very what angry. angry. In fact, I think I used the word pissed. He was pissed off. He was more than pissed off. He was very very angry. And sometimes we do some things in haste out of being what? Angry. Angry. I think I talked about this last week. How many jail cells is filled with people who then flew off the handle because they made a decision out of being angry, right? Losing their temper. So he was very mad, but he had enough wisdom to ask some wise men 
what should be done. He knew that something needed to be done, but he sought the counsel of some wise men and they gave him the advice of making a decree and a decree basically of divorce, meaning that he wanted, uh, those, those wise men suggested that he make a royal decree that could not be repealed, meaning that it could not be reversed, that she would no longer be um, able to come into his presence and that his her royal position would get, be given to another. Don't that sound like he didn't kicked her to yep. be mm -hmm. see you or be heard? Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Yeah. Okay. So for a recap, we understood that rebellion comes with a cost, right? Mm -hmm. Disobedience comes with a cost. There were some things that she lost her royal position, meaning that she didn't get the perks of being queen anymore, okay? So that was that. So and remember, when he requested her, there was an audience, meaning that she didn't just do that in the privacy of their home where it was just between them two. She did it in a manner where everybody was present. And could it be that that's why he was so mad? Because mm -hmm. if it was me, I'd be embarrassed. Yeah. Yeah. Because sometimes when you get embarrassed, it produces other emotions. Am I right about it? Yeah. Okay, so... What she did was rather embarrassing, right? So here, as we find ourselves in chapter two, it picks back up. It says later, that means some time has passed since this incident, since he has sent this royal decree, since she has been kicked to the curb, some time has passed, because it says, does it not say later? Later when the king, when his fury yeah. has subsided. <clears throat> so we're talking about, so here in this narrative, we are now talking about if he didn't kick her to the curb, that means that a door has closed, right? That's the end of something, right? Yeah, yeah. And sometimes in order for us to have something new or a new beginning, we must first have to close the door on one thing. Mm -hmm. See, that's a good, there we go, I'm going somewhere. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the problem with us is before we close a door, mm -hmm. we out doing, trying to do something new. We trying to do some new and some old. Mm -hmm. But before we can move fully forward, you got to make sure you close the door. Right. Meaning that, married people, if you're going through a divorce, no, you should not be dating until, I don't care how separated you are, right? Am I right? Am I talking about, yeah. am I by myself? Yeah. I don't care how separated you be. You can be separated for 15 years. If you don't have it signed down there in the courthouse, you are still married. But sometimes what happens is we do a separation and then we go get a girlfriend or boyfriend and we still got some loose ends to be tied up. Mm -hmm. So in order to move forward, you must first end it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm not promoting divorce, but so, I mean, let's just keep it real. There's people that I've gone through a divorce. But before you can move forward in anything, you need to first <coughs> close that down, shut that down. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Everybody good? Mm -hmm. Volume's good? And so we see here that he took care of that part. So a door has closed. He has closed the door to a previous marriage. Mm -hmm. And now he's finding himself sitting here. Now his anger has subsided. And now he's remembering Vashti and what she had done and what he had to greet. And so now what we see here is we're seeing here that he is now kind of like almost in a transition period. Do y'all see that? He's not there anymore with her, but he hasn't begun anything new. And sometimes many of us can find ourselves there. We can find ourselves where we're just kind of in limbo. We're in transition. And so what we see here is he's in, he, in, his, in this transition position that he finds himself in. It says that his fury, his fury has subsided. And so what, before we even go here, let's think about some things that we need to move forward from. So here we see that he has moved forward from a relationship, a marriage, right? But there's other things because I don't want us to think that this is just about somebody being married and divorced, but there's many things that we can find ourselves moving on from. Like, okay, for instance, there could be a marriage that you're moving on from, a friendship. Mm -hmm. Don't some friendships come to end? I don't know yeah. about you. Have you ever had a real, real bad falling out with a friend and it was uh, irreparable? Mm -hmm. 
Um, and maybe if you're not married, just a relationship period between a man and a woman. Maybe you've been dating somebody for a while and there was something that transpired in the relationship and now you're at a point that you can't bounce back from it, mm -hmm. right? What about a job? Mm -hmm. yeah. A career? Or what if you find yourself in retirement, right? Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of things that, that come to an end that we deal with. But not only that, there's also partnerships. Maybe you've been in partnership with somebody or uh, uh, doing a collaboration with somebody and now that has come to an end or a partnership in businesses. But there's many different ways that we find ourselves in these things where now it has come to an end, it's over and it's time to move forward or move on, <laughs> right? Because what if you had a falling out with a family, with some family members, you may need to move on, move forward through some things because maybe they're not ready to have, to have the talk or to get things back together. Meaning that you don't quit being somebody's family member just because you had a falling out. Family is different. But then there's certain situations, like if you were in an abusive relationship, it ain't, it ain't just move forward, it's time to move on, mm -hmm. yeah. right? And so, and oftentimes when something has ended, it often comes with some sort of emotions, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. I don't know, I don't know what emotion you might have felt. Uh, some of the people in here that has, is retired, I'm sure that some of the emotion could have been where you were fearful. Like, I don't know, you know, like leading up to it, like trying to make the decision to retire. Maybe you went back and forth with, you know, am I going to have enough? We you know what is life going to look like, especially if you've been on your, that job for X amount of years, like years, you know, you know, I'm not talking about somebody that get a, a job every 15 minutes. I'm talking about when you've been at something for so long and then you know that it's winding up and it's time to come to a close, it comes with some type of emotion, right? Are we talk are y'all talking tonight? No, yes. Okay, so we see that it comes with some emotion. So this end that he's found himself in, it came with fury. He was mad, right? Yeah. Right? And I'm sure you and Lisa, y'all probably talk of football sometimes when it's time for, I know y'all was teasing last year when the season was coming up. Uh, who was it that got out of the um, playoffs? Was it Pittsburgh first? They didn't make it. Oh, they didn't make Oh, Pittsburgh didn't make it. <laughs> Pittsburgh didn't make it, right? Yeah. But see, when they got kicked out of the playoffs or when Dallas didn't finish off, you it's it's time that things have to come to a close, right, Jen? It has to come to a close, right, Jen? Mm -hmm. And then, Jack, I know you as a Stephen uh, Curry uh, fan, right? What's their, the uh, Golden State, no, he ain't Golden State Warriors. Is it Golden State Warriors? Mm -hmm. Yeah, when they have to go sit down sometime, right? Yeah. It comes to an end. And so it comes with some emotions. When they didn't make the, when Pittsburgh didn't make the playoffs, was you, you wasn't happy about it, I'm sure. And, and my brother, my brother, I don't even like when Dallas plays on a holiday because it's like, oh, he need to go home with that. It's terrible, especially if they're not playing good. So we know that things come, yeah, we know that things come with a lot of emotions, right? So, right. And so, yeah, so, we know that it can be difficult, meaning that you're gonna experience some type of emotion. But not only that, notice that this situation with this king, it wasn't something that was expected at the time. Remember, this was kind of unexpected. He didn't expect her to refuse him. He didn't, ex he didn't wake up that morning thinking, oh, I'm getting a divorce. I'm gonna uh, issue out a royal decree. And sometimes that's what happens with us when we find ourselves in these relationships that have come to an end. Again, I've named all type of, it's not just about our marriage or a relationship between a man and a woman, but it could be friendships, partnerships, whatever that situation is. But when it comes to an end, again, it was unexpected. Some people, under the sound of my voice tonight, you may be one where you've been served divorce papers, or maybe you haven't gotten the papers, but one of the, your, um, or maybe your spouse has come to you unexpectedly, you didn't even see it coming. And here you find yourself at the end of your marriage, unexpectedly, suddenly, 
And so we see here with this king, this was unexpected. This was suddenly, but here we are. And so here, after some time has passed, notice it has been some time since the separate, or not only one sep say separation because the divorce decree, I mean, that decree meant it was not, you can't repeal it. That means that was final. So it had been some time since it has been finalized. But notice it said his fury had subsided. After, meaning that even though he went through that, and remember, he was the initiator. He was still mad about it. Y'all see that? You can be the initiator to end some things and still be mad about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> my cousin can attest that even though I was the initiator in my divorce, I, I was mad for a while. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Carolyn, you can attest to that. I was mad for a wow. And so we see here, it says later, when King Xerxes' fury had subsided. So that lets us know that after a wow, eventually his anger had lessened. So we're talking about moving on or moving forward tonight. So when we see here, we see here that the king... His anger is now subsided, so he's in a very good place in his life to move on. Because sometimes we don't need to move on while we're still angry. Sometimes we might need to stay in transition until we get them emotions right. under control. Because the goal is to move forward, but how are you going to move forward mad? Yeah. Right? Sometimes we need to take that time and work out. Notice... It didn't say he had a bunch of women or he had a girlfriend or he had got remarried. It, it just says that he later, when his fury had subsided, he hadn't got with nobody yet. And sometimes that's the problem with us is we don't want to work on us before bringing somebody else into the mix. Y'all with me? We mad and angry, but then, after it, what, you know what would happen if you hurry up and bring somebody else into the mix? Mm -hmm. You're going you gonna to treat them all kind of crazy. Yeah. You're going to be, you're, you're not good for anybody while you're mad. Mm -hmm. And so, first of all, we noticed that from the top, I said, in order to move forward, that situation has to be irreparable. Married people, if there's some hope, work at it. Because <laughs> I'm not advocating divorce, but I'm also not going to sugarcoat it as if it doesn't exist in the church. In the church. Oh, I don't got no amens tonight? Amen. Yeah. So I'm not advocating for it, but I'm not going to say it doesn't happen because it does happen, especially in the world, but it definitely happens in the church. We just... We kind of just a little quiet about it. And so in order to move forward, you, you meaning that you recognize that this situation is dead. You recognize that it's time for me to retire. You recognize that this job no longer serves me. You recognize that our partnership for business is over. It's irreparable. And it doesn't always have to be that somebody done something. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't always, but sometimes it is. But if, it, if they haven't done anything, maybe it's time to move forward. But if they've done, done some stuff, some, some illegal stuff, and then got you all twisted up and caught up in stuff, I think maybe it's time to move on, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. And so moving on, meaning that the situation is irreparable, meaning that it's impossible to change. Again, he his situation was, if, according to chapter 1, verse 19, the royal decree that cannot be repealed, meaning that his situation, can we say that his situation cannot be reversed? So it was in a dead, irreparable situation, all right? But not only that, moving on requires us not to get stuck. Ah! <laughs> it requires us not to get stuck, and what I mean by that is you can't get stuck in your feelings. His feelings was mad. Yeah. Right? 
And sometimes some of us have been mad. I think yes. we sh I shared that a few yeah. minutes ago, right? We've been mad. And some of us has been mad for some years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a woman or man who been divorced 10, 15 years ago, still mad, stuck, still pissed off. And um, <laughs> some of us have been mad for a very, very long time. We've been mad for years. We've been mad at siblings. We've been mad at ex-spouses. We've been mad at ex-girlfriends, boyfriends. We've been pissed, mad. Mm-hmm. Cause mom, you ain't you still mad because of the Supremes how they broke up? <laughs> Been mad years. <laughs> mad at Diana Ross because she left the Supremes. Been mad years. Still mad. Don't bring up the Supremes because the first thing she want to say is, yeah, that Di mm -mm, that Diana Ross left them Supremes. She didn't do them right. Look, ain't even cool with them. No, no, the whole story. <laughs> I do know the whole story. And there's a newscaster here in town. I ain't even gonna mention his that person's name. Got mad at him, said he ain't friendly because he didn't speak to her when she was coming through the McDonald's drive through Still mad. And then there's another person she mad at. Am I lying, David? Swear up and down that he didn't pay the people that work for him. And I ain't saying their names. <laughs> Don't know these people from nobody but mad. But we laughing at her, and it is funny, that's funny. But who are we still mad at? And it's been 10, 15, 20 years, and we still stuck. We, we refusing to move forward because we still are pissed off behind what they did or didn't do. Or it may be, get this, it may be that we mad, and we the ones who did the stuff to the person, but we mad that they left us. Mm -hmm. The nerve. The nerve. So you mad? Yeah. Yeah. How you gonna get mad when you the one who messed up the marriage? Or how you mad when you the one who messed up the relationship? How you mad because you cheat? How are you mad because you the one that was stealing from me? How are you mad? I'm talking about real stuff tonight. Am I lying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. How are you mad? So we can't get stuck in our feelings. And remember it said the king's anger has subsided, meaning it had died down. It had lessened. Again, some of us have been so mad for so long. And see, when we are not careful, when you allow um, your anger to go unchecked, it turns into bitterness. Yeah. 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 You ever met somebody? There's one thing to meet somebody mad, but have you ever met somebody bitter? Yeah. I'm talking about bitter or, or a, a person who is scornful, who will come and bust your windows out, who will come and, and, and flatten all your tires. I'm talking about somebody that will show up on your job. I'm talking about bitterness. Oh, you might as well go ahead and drop your jaw again, Mom, because I've been a bitter person where I didn't like a breakup, and I done went out there and keyed cars and broke wind and everything. Yes, I did. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My brother took me to do it. No, he didn't. <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> But yeah, if, uh, anger left unchecked will turn into bitterness because all that is is you stewing and stewing and stewing and stewing. So again, in order to move forward, you got to get unstuck. You can't allow your emotions to control you. Yes, there's going to be things that are going to hurt us. There's going to be things that's going to make us upset. But then there comes a time where you got to let it go. He was mad. But then it says later when his fury had subsided, meaning that there came a time where he let that situation go. Mm -hmm. Can we do the same? Can we begin to let some things go? Whether we have been the victim or the perpetrator, let it go. We're talking to y'all quiet today. Y'all talk, y'all thinking about that person. I'm going to go ahead. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? How do you do that? Great question. I'm holding on to some stuff. Great question. Still holding on to some stuff. Um, actually, um, um, Lisa, when I was out of town, she taught the uh, Bible study for me. Oh, well, she taught it. Uh, she taught. She she filled in for me at church, and she um, we developed a um, 
a Bible study. Everybody give an applause for Lisa. Hey, Lisa. Lisa. Lisa filled in for me while I was out of town. And she was like, okay. I mean, she just did it just like she embraced it without even having any details. But anyway, um, the last thing that I outlined for us was about mercy and forgiveness. And the thing about it is when we think about how much we've been forgiven by God, and then if we think about how we are required by God to forgive, then it makes it a little bit, I don't say it's totally easy, it puts it in perspective and then we can start trying to, um, number one, you definitely need the Holy Spirit to help you. You can't do it on your own. And it's a process, meaning that if you make up your mind that you want to forgive, then you make room for the Holy Spirit to help you to forgive. There it is. Time. If you have a willing heart to want to, you have to have a willing heart to want to. And then if you have the willing heart to want to, the Holy Spirit, if you truly have the Holy Spirit living inside of you, it will help you to let some things go. Because trust and believe. Mm -hmm. I went through a process where, the reason I'm pausing is because I'm not trying to oust nobody. But I didn't like the way I was being treated through the process, this legal process. And the reason we were going through the legal process is because, let me just put, put it right there. I didn't like the way that I was being treated. It was unfair. And I had the power to sink that person. And the Holy Spirit would not allow me to. Was they deserving of it? Yes. But what God in God's economy, He does, we don't we don't get to do tit for tat. No matter what somebody else do, our response always has to be Christ-like. Will we nail it on the head every time? No. We're we gonna fly off the handle and cuss somebody out. But if you one of the ones that are always cussing somebody out, at least if you're trying to get better, if you was cussing them out Monday through Sunday, then at least if you're cussing them out Monday through Wednesday, you're getting better. All right. Right? It's a process. So it's not, I'm going to tell you right now, especially when we're holding on to something and we know that they did something and it's some dirty dog stuff. Yes. But then you have to ask yourself this question. What have I done in the sight of God to him? Have you always been at Bible study trying to learn of him? Have you always tried to do right by God? Mm -mm. And all of us have sinned and fall short yes, of the glory of yes, God. Yes, yes. 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 And when we yes. think about, and always think about this, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to us, meaning that Jesus came to earth sinless, didn't do anything, but he took it on the chin for all of humanity. Yeah. Not just people who are following him. He took it on the chin for the Muslims, the Christians, the whites, the blacks, the Asians, all of us. The straight, the gay, because I, I can't pretend to know all of the Q, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, Q, Q R, F. I'm, and that's no shade. I just don't know all the, the, different, length, uh, the different letters to that. He came and died for all of us. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, he did. Someone who didn't do nothing wrong. He took it on the chin for us. Thank you. Thank you. Well, maybe I should just not even I shouldn't even minimize that. He took it on the cross for yes, us. He did. Uh -huh. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yeah. And then there's there's books that um Christ, some Christian leaders have um wrote that helps. Really what happens with us is I believe that testimonies, other people's testimonies help us to release some things. Yeah. And sometimes when you hear other people's stories of how they have forgiven mm -hmm. people, you will. do you remember the guy, I can't remember his name, but he came to our church before, um, the blind man, driving down 70. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And the, the uh, black guy was driving down 70. A white boy was throwing boulders off the freeway. His got hit. He ended up blind. Boy went to prison. The man ended up, it's called, he wrote a book called The Face of Forgiveness. Mm -hmm. His whole life changed. Mm -hmm. 
he ends up years later going to visit the boy in jail. Mm -hmm. And now he has forgiven him. And I think, do they do ministry something do something together? Yeah. Something. Yeah. Something. Yeah. Something. Mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. came out of that. I came God did that. Did, did you? Did you? Yeah, he was forgiven. So if he could find it in his heart to forgive something where he's blind, he will never see again. It has altered his life. But yeah, it's not, forgiveness is not easy, especially if it's been something that has been done to you. But again, remember what uh, Trina Braxton's, well, what she had said in the shade room. She said, there's like, like just like what I was saying, there's some things you're going to move forward in and there's some things you're going to move on from. Mm -hmm. And so you have to ask the question, moving forward doesn't mean that that didn't happen to you. You're just refusing to allow that to hold you hostage mm -hmm. to keep you from living your best life. Does that make sense? All right. You'll do it. And I could tell by the looks of y'all, she's been on you about forgiving, hasn't she? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll talk to you about it after Oh, okay. Because I don't take up your time. Oh, we're fine. We're fine. So, not only do we need not to get stuck in our feelings, but we also, we can't dwell on the past. Mm. Notice it says, mm, he true. remembered Vashti and what she had done and what had been decreed about her. And sometimes we are stuck there. We are stuck dwelling on the past. And we, when I use this word dwelling, you know, like your dwelling place, that means you live there, you park there. That's all you can think about. That's all you talk about. Every time somebody, you come in contact with somebody, you telling them what so-and-so done done to you and all that kind of stuff. Can't nobody get yeah. away from you. Every time you turn around, that's all you want to talk. When somebody call you on the phone, that's the first thing you want to talk about. When they see you out, that's the first thing you want to say. You at the club, they talk about there. You at church, they got you in the corner talking about there. So you got to quit dwelling on the past. And I ain't gonna lie, I was doing this because I kept repeating what was done to me, what was done to me every five seconds, what was done to me. I had to get to the place if I'm going to move forward. I can't keep talking about it. Right. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> let it go. You got to let it go. It said that he was remembering. He, when his anger had subsided, he remembered Vashti and what she had done. So he, this it seems like to me that's something that's playing over because she's not in front of him. So if you're remembering, that does that has to do with your mind, right? Mm -hmm. So that meant that that thing, that situation was constantly on his mind. And yeah. if he's not, if it, if, and if something is on your mind, normally if it's on your mind, you're talking about it yeah. over and over. Yeah. And if you ain't talking about it to a, a live person, you're talking, you're moping around, to talking to yourself. <laughs> and some of us is talking to ourselves and answering ourselves <laughs> and high-fiving ourselves and everything, right? <laughs> All of that. Right, right, right. Right, so we're talking about, oh shoot, I'm sorry, uh, Facebook Live. Hey, everybody. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. And so we got to quit dwelling, meaning that you are not living in the past. Remember the king, the king they said the king remembered Vashti and what she had done and what he had decreed. So why is he dwelling there? Why is he remembering that when that situation is a done thing? That means, remember, the royal decree that cannot be repealed. He understood that. But sometimes we can understand some things and still dwell there. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Some of us, like I said, somebody, some people have gone through a divorce. The ink is dried and papers is turning yellow because they underneath the, in between the mattresses but you're still dwelling on what had occurred. Uh -huh. Yes, he did you dirty. Yes, he had 50 11 women. Yes, or he had a harem of women, right? Yes, she she um, went with your friend. Yes, they did you dirty on that job. Yes, they talked behind your back. Yes, but you still gotta let it go. Yeah. I'm drawn to you. I don't know how long ago that situation is, but no, it's this still. Is, this is a whole nother situation. Oh, shoot. Now I, it's another situation. I moved out the house. I passed. I, I got through that. Mm -hmm. Now it's, a, it's happening. Not, the same thing ain't happening. 
Mm-hmm. But it's, it's some more stuff in another house I'm in. My RM, he is driving me crazy. He's going to the peer center where we hang out at, mm-hmm. talking talking about me at the peer center, mm-hmm. starting stuff, trying to get me to, you know, trying to provoke me in that, because me and him the only one in the house. There's mm-hmm. no witnesses. Mm-hmm. So he's trying to provoke me. Mm-hmm. Every night when I go, I go in late at night just so I ain't got to, to hope he's in bed, so I ain't got to deal with him. He's, and he's only like five foot four. Oh. Just a short little dude. Mm-hmm. But, he's, but could, he's it he's, could it be? Could it be a mental issue? He, he's sick. He is sick. And I, I know him from the streets. Mm-hmm. But he's just, he's lying on me at the peer center, talking to him about, dirty about me. And they they actually came to me and said, you need to apologize to him. Mm-hmm. Okay. For something I didn't even do. Right. It's yeah. crazy. It's driving yeah. me crazy, man. I can see why. Yeah. Yeah, those are crazy. I'm worried when I go home tonight. I told Jennifer I'm, I'm gonna record him. Mm-hmm. So I mean, I'm not. You know, I, ain't, I ain't trying to be no snitch, but I told him I said y'all gotta move somebody else in this house. So so y'all so at least I have a witness. Somebody mm-hmm. else can see what see what he's doing. Okay. He's messing with my recovery. Mm-hmm. What he's doing. Mm-hmm. And the rule is. You're not allowed to smoke in the house. Mm-hmm. He likes cigarettes off the stove, and then he, he, he did to the whole house smells like cigarettes. Mm-hmm. So if they come in that house, there's only me and him in the house. Mm-hmm. And he gonna try to I know, I know how dirty he is. Mm-hmm. He gonna try to put it on me. Mm-hmm. Well, since you already know his hand and you know how he moves, yeah. Then you strategically through prayer, through prayer. Did you hear what I said? Through prayer, wise counsel. Meaning that God is your wise counsel because at the end, we'll, we'll talk about more yeah, of it afterwards, yeah, okay? So we can't dwell, and that's not even past, that's what you did was present. You can't dwell with the. Mm-hmm. We'll talk, we'll talk more of it because I don't want, um, we're filming, I don't want all of your business online. So again, don't dwell on the past we can't live there we can't park there we can't just be stuck there so again there's many of us have been parked for a long time and again if when you're upset and you're mad and you're angry and you're refusing to move on and stuff your it your your body will start um will start uh what word am i looking reacting off of that yeah. When you're angry and upset, yeah. you're stressed, you're stressful, you have anxiety, you can't sleep, and things like that. So it's not healthy. It's not healthy to hold on to stuff like that, right? Mm-hmm. What time is it? We got to Okay. So in order to move on or move forward, we need to make sure that we're not dwelling on the past. And not only that, okay, so he's... You know, his anger has subsided. I mean, he was starting to chill and he was starting to, you know, remember Vashti and he's starting to play all this over and over in his mind about what had happened and, you know, what his decree. It almost seems like he, it was almost like he's regretting it. Mm. The text doesn't concretely tell us that, but if you're remembering, if you're done with something, you kind of don't be fooled. You don't be, I know when I'm done with something, I don't be worried about it no more. But when you constantly are, are replaying stuff over and in your mind, you bother. You're bothered. So it's almost, it's almost given the indication as if he might be kind of like remorse, like he regretting it or something. But then notice something happens. In verse two, it says the king's personal attendants proposed let a search be made for beautiful young virgins, virgins for the king. Let the king appoint commissioners in every promise of his province of his realm to bring all these beautiful young women into the harem at the citadel of Susa and let them be placed under the care of Haggai, the king's unit, who is in charge of the women and let beauty treatments and beauty tre- treatments be given to them. Then let the young women who please the king be queen instead of Vashti. So what we see here is when He's thinking about this woman, you know, he's remembering, you know, what has happened. And then all of a sudden we see here that the king's attendants gave him a proposal. Notice he didn't ask for one. They suggested one. And sometimes people, other people can see us in a rut, if you will, that we can't ourselves see ourselves in. So what is happening here is what I see that is happening here is they're giving him a little nudge because they understand it's time to move forward. And sometimes that is what we need. 
sometimes we need that little nudge that says, you know what? You've been right here. You've been stuck too long. It's time for you to move on. It's time for you to move forward. And notice I said nudge <laughs> and not slap <laughs> or hit. Because sometimes we can be around some people that we know need to move on and we get mad because they ain't move on. And it, and really it's their life, but we pissed off about it. Like, I don't know why she's still dealing with that. I don't know why he's still doing this. But no, notice they made a proposal. They proposed it. They didn't just come in and be like, why are you still tripping about her? You know, why are you, you know, you know how we get. Right. You still on that? Right. You still at that job? <laughs> you still in that house? <laughs> right? You still doing whatever X, Y, and Z? No, they gave him a little nudge. And sometimes that's what we need in order for us to move on. Sometimes we need a little nudge. We need somebody in our corner, somebody who cares about us. Again, this, these, these people that are giving him this nudge, this proposal, they're in close proximity. These are somebody that are close to him. These are his attendants. Because in order to serve the king in that capacity as an attendant, you had to be very well trusted. Yeah. So this, so this nudge came from those who he trusts, those who are trustworthy. And sometimes that's what we need. We need somebody to remind us that that door is closed, babes. Mm -hmm. It's time to move on. Yeah. The writing's on the wall, dude. It's time to move forward. Mm -hmm. That job that stressed you out, babes, it's time to move on. Mm -hmm. Girl, they been fired you two years ago. Why are we still talking about that? Mm -hmm. It's time to move on. Maybe not. Maybe we shouldn't say it like that because that, to me that was a little rough. But maybe we can be like, hey, have you ever considered working at such and such? You know, it's time for you to do something else. Because remember, that situation is done. The king deaded it. Is that a word? <laughs> dead it. Dead it. How you spelling it? Somebody spell it in the comments. Dead it. Dead. D e a d. D e a d. I t. Push together. It's dead. He. He's the one that caused it to be done, but yet he's still stuck. Yeah. And so here, his attendance is giving him that push, like, hey. Let's let's get some girls in here. <laughs> I know so, so, right? Let's get you. Let's let's search. Let us search. Basically, what they're saying. Maybe I should have said. I should have said like that. But what he's saying. What he's saying. What they're saying is, let us search be made. Basically, let's get you a replacement. Yeah. Yeah. But notice they didn't come while he was still pissed off. They this nudge didn't come while he was still mad. This nudge came when he was dwelling in the past. Hmm. And so they was like, hey, let's do this. And so sometimes we, like this king, we ourselves need a little nudge. Mm -hmm. I know that, you know, you've been at that place for 22 years, 25 years or 30 years. Some people have been on their job for 40 years. I don't understand. I hope I don't, I'm not, I hope I'm not at Nationwide 60 years. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I don't, I hope I'm not. <laughs> but sometimes we need the nudge, like yeah. it's time for you to start looking at something else. In other words, it's time for you to do something new. The old thing is done. What does Isaiah 43, 18 and 19? Do not dwell on the things of past. Don't consider the things of old. God is doing a new thing. And could it be that the reason why we are in the situations we are in is because we're stuck in a place that no longer is serving us. Mm. I don't know where that came from. Wow. But anyway, it says sometimes, you know, sometimes we need that nudge again. His attendants suggested that he start, that they start looking for a replacement. Are you looking for your replacement or are you, 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 and you, are you looking, you, 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 are we looking for our replacement, a replacement, or are we stuck? And this ain't just about boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife. I'm talking about anything that you are stuck in, that you are refusing to move forward, that that thing ain't had no life in it, and I don't know how long. Are you ready to move forward? Are you ready for that new thing? 
And so sometimes we need a nudge. So this is the nudge tonight, boo, boo, boo. I'm giving, I'm serving as the nudge tonight. It's time for you to start dating again. It's time for you to look for a replacement. It's time for you to look for a new job. It's time for you to go on and retire. It's time for you, now that you can retire, it's time for you to start traveling. And if you don't got the money to travel, then maybe go and drive some Uber and stuff like that. Get you some money together and go traveling. So I'm serving as the nudge tonight saying, that door is closed. It's now time for you to move on to the next thing. Can we say next? Next. 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 Yeah. Here's your nudge. That thing ain't, that situation ain't working no more. Here's your nudge. That house ain't serving you no more. It's time to move on to something else. Maybe that apartment, maybe it's time to get rid of the apartment. It's time to buy the house. Here's your nudge. But not only that, as I'm running to it, what they say in church, close. as I run to my, run to a close. <laughs> also, we need to also understand, look at verse number four. It says, in verse four, it says, so after they make the suggestion, it says, um, this advice appealed the king. So what does that say to us? It says that basically what this is saying to us is he's ready to move forward because he's now open. He's open to new possibilities. Mm -hmm. They didn't have yeah. somebody chosen yet, but just the possibility of the replacement. Mm -hmm. And so can we be like this king and says, you know what? Okay, I'm open. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And notice they didn't just say we're going to go get one. They're going to get a whole bunch of them, mm -hmm. meaning that you got <laughs> options. <laughs> you got options, meaning that you ain't going to just go with just some random. You got options. Right. Meaning that if you if you single, you freshly newly divorced or whatever, you've been divorced a while and you ain't moved on, start dating. But notice he didn't start going to get his own. He didn't go looking for it himself. Right. He had some help. So sometimes, <laughs> I'm laughing like I don't know what. Sometimes, because he chose the other queen and she didn't work out. <laughs> so sometimes we might need a little assistance. Oh, shoot. Sometimes we need a little assistance this go round. Yeah, I'm preaching to me now. Before you ain't got you ain't got your own. <laughs> but now you need a little help. Maybe you get some little your little friends. Some of your friends don't have no qualification to go find you nothing. <laughs> they find the strays. <laughs> but it's okay now to get a little help because what you chose last time that was rebellion. You chose rebellion last time. And so now. They're saying, let's get a variety and let's see. We're going to bring this variety in, whoever is pleasing to you. Mm -hmm. Meaning that you still have the ultimate, you, you, it's your decision, but at least you got a variety to look at. Right. <laughs> Everybody out there, if y'all got a variety, y'all want me to look at. <laughs> but anyway, let's... <laughs> But not only just variety in relationship, variety jobs. I mean, anybody say they make suggestions. If you out of a job and you need a replacement, let somebody send. send I'm gonna send you forty job postings, right? Yeah, yeah. Look, don't just look at one job. Look at multiple jobs. Don't just look at one young lady. Look at if you're single and ready to mingle. Look at many. I ain't saying going with them at the same time. I'm not saying that at all. Be respectful, but. You know, like, what's that restaurant that has the um, multiple, buffet. the buffet, Golden Corral, um, don't fool no Golden Corral, <laughs> but you have a variety to choose from, right? And so, yeah, he's making, he's letting them, he's, they're saying, let some people go out here and gather up some young virgins for you to choose from, which whoever is pleasing to you, let them choose for you. And so he's open to new possibilities. Can we be the same way? Can we be open to new possibilities? Again, their suggestions please the king, new prospects, not some randoms, not some strays. One who will be pleasing to the king. 
again, he's looking for a queen, not a side chick, not a side piece. He's looking for a queen. Also, notice his response. He says, I said, this advice appealed to the king and he followed it. Yeah. So what does that say? That says that he is moving, moving forward. Oh. He's moving forward or moving on. Oh. What? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sound like a plan to me, don't it? Yeah. Yep. So he was okay. open to the new possibilities and then <clears throat> he moved forward. And so that's what I want to leave here today. When something is dead or irreparable, mm -hmm. it's time to move forward. Don't get stuck in your feelings. Again, some of us been mad for years. Don't dwell on the past, meaning that don't occupy that space. Don't live there. Don't be chasing people down every time you see somebody rehearsing what has happened to you. But also, sometimes we need to welcome, again, he got a nudge because sometimes we can get a nudge, but we ain't welcoming the nudge. We telling people to stay out of our business. Sometimes we need to welcome them nudges because mm -hmm. I'll tell this story and we're going to close on that. Um, my kids got my location and they feel like they need to follow, you know, watch me everywhere I go. So whenever they call me, they be like, where are you at? I already know you know where I'm at, Brittany and Jasmine, I already and Laurent. I know y'all already know where I'm at, Day Day. And so when you ask me where I'm at, I can't lie. I have to tell the truth because sometimes I'm somewhere and they might want something. I don't be wanting to pick up now. I'll be wanting to go home. But anyway, they'll call me and say, where you at? And I'll be like, why? Because I already know you know. Right. Oh, what, what, why are you being so secretive? Who are you with? I was somewhere um, having a conversation with somebody I hadn't seen for a while. And Brittany was like, is that a dude? And I'm like, why? Why? Is it a dude? Is it a dude? And I'm like, why? Uh, put me on speaker. And I put her on speaker because this particular person, he he knows her. I mean, she, I, I said he <laughs> knows her. But anyway, um, she was like, um, hi, who are you? And we was laughing or whatever. And then she said, well, um, would you like to take her out on a date? She likes the Lord and Starbucks. She loves the Lord and Starbucks. And I said, but get this, I said, quit trying to pimp me out. I said, my kids is always trying to pimp. And then my uh, son-in-law, he says, mom, you can't find her. You're not going to get with nobody always in the house. All you do is go to church and Bible study and you're up in the room watching a uh, reality show. They be trying to pimp me out. But here in this text, it's allowing me to say, maybe I need a little nudge. Now, you ain't going to pimp me out. But like, maybe I need a little nudge. And maybe be open to whatever. How did we get here? I don't know.